Okay, welcome everyone to our another part of IFSA Local Committee's webinar series. In this webinar, um, we have speakers from Turkey and Switzerland, and this webinar is hosted by ST Istanbul and LC Zurich. Our first speaker will be Dr. Tessa Hegetschweiler from Swiss Federal Forest, Swiss Federal Institute for Forest. And then we will have Dr. Hassan Tejan Yildirim from Department of Forest Policy and Administration from Istanbul University, Ceyrah Pasha. So after each speaker, we will have 10 to 15 minute discussion. So you could write your questions from our chat. So yeah, first we will start with Dr. Tessa. So Elias could give us a brief introduction and thank you for joining. Yeah. So, um, Dr. Tessa Hegetschweiler. Um, <laughs> she made her um, master's degree in uh, the year 2003 um, in environmental science at the ETH Zurich. And in Sorry? 2008, um, she uh, earned her PhD at the Department of Environmental Science um, in the section of Conservation and Biology at the Uni University of Basel. And since 2017, uh, she's a scientist um, at the Swiss uh, Federal Research Institute for Forest, Snow and Landscape. Um, yeah, and her uh, research interests are um, forest recreation, urban forestry, um, visitor management, um, recreational ecology, and linking physical with social data. And today, Dr. Hegetschweiler uh, will talk about the integration of the rec recreational service of the forest into the national forest inventory of Switzerland. Dr. Tessa Hegetschweiler, thank you so much for being here today um, with us, and the stage is yours. Thanks a lot for the introduction and um, thanks for inviting me to the, this webinar. Um, now I'll just try and share my screen. Okay, I think this should work. Good. Um, maybe just quickly, um, in, in addition to what um, Elias said, um, I've been working at WSL ever since, well, actually 2013 um, and from 2014 onwards as a postdoc, first for three years and then um, as, a, as a research scientist. Um, and so the work that I'm going to present you now actually covers what we've been doing from 2014 onwards, which is, as Elias already mentioned, um, we've been um, trying to integrate uh, recreation and the um, social dimension of forest into forest monitoring and especially into the Swiss National Forest Inventory. Um, so why are we doing this? Well, we see an increasing importance of forest recreation due to urbanization and densification. We see an increasing number of people in the forest and the foresters are, it's also what the foresters are telling us, there seem to be more people in the forest. And we say that the knowledge of needs and preferences of the population and especially of forest visitors concerning forest recreation is important for forest management. If the forest management um, is supposed to consider societal needs, and obviously there is a need if there are more and more people in the forest. And knowledge concerning the potential attractiveness of forests can form a basis for management actions. Now, forest monitoring normally focuses either on physical aspects of the forest, the classical forest data, or on social aspects. But for forest recreation, you really need both. You need the physical forest where the people actually go 
and you need to know things about the forest visitors themselves. So national forest inventories or NFIs as they're normally shortened to, they assess forest characteristics and resources and they evaluate the state of the forest. But most um, NFIs acro in, across the world only marginally, if at all, consider the recreational function of forest. It's the same in Switzerland as well, even though the NFI actually does um, look at a few aspects of forest recreation, it's still quite marginal. And on the other hand, we have nationwide household surveys. In Switzerland, we have what we call VAMOS, which is the social cultural forest monitoring. Um, but there are others, Finland, for example, has its LVVI, or um, Denmark also has a similar um, survey. And they provide information about the relationship of the population to the forest and of also concerning recreational use, but there is no spatial link to the physical forest. And therefore, we said that we need a tool to bridge the gap between these two monitoring instruments. Now, I just very quickly want to introduce you to the Swiss Social Cultural Forest Monitoring of Amos. Um, VAMOS looks at all aspects of the relationship of the population to the forest. So re recreation of people in the forest, as you see here, that's just one part, but we also look at what people um, think about the production of timber and what their attitude is um, to nature conservation or to the protection from natural hazards. Um, and we look at which factors lead to these different um, perceptions or assessments of the people. So it's really very large. Now for my study, for what I'm doing, it's really um, only the aspect of the recreation of the people in the forest that interests me. And of course the factors leading to all this. Um. So in VAMOS, forest recreation is assessed by forest visit frequency, general forest preferences. For example, do people um, like um, coniferous forests better or deciduous forests? Um, we ask about their preferences concerning recreational infrastructure. We also ask about perceived qualities of the forest visited most often and the overall assessment of the forest visited most often. So as a result from this survey, we know that the assessment of the forest depends on perceived qualities of the forest and on values and attitudes concerning forests. So the importance of forests in the childhood and forest preferences especially. So we know on the one hand, we know the forest very well and spatially precisely from the National Forest Inventory. We know the preferences of the people quite well. We know how much they like the forest they visit most often and how they characterize this forest. And we know that this matters regarding the attractiveness of it. But we don't know what this forest really looks like that the people visit most often and what physical attributes it shows with regard to national forest inventory items. Because these national forest inventory items are in a completely different monitoring. Therefore, we want to try and combine, combine the national forest inventory on the one hand, which assesses physical forest data across the whole country on a systematic grid. And on the other hand, and um, these household surveys that assess um, a preferences of people, social demographic data, the evaluation of the forest and so on. So we ask ourselves, how can we create a comprehensive forest monitoring instrument covering both physical and social aspects of forest recreation? Does forest quality, for example, visual attractiveness play a role for forest recreation? 
and can we predict visual attractiveness of the forest with physical characteristics and social data? So this led to the project, uh, we call it VML or Vamos meets LFE or NFI. Well, LFE is the Swiss abbreviation for, for the NFI, for the National Forest Inventory. Um, we started, as I mentioned before, in 2014, um, first with a literature review and a conceptual model. Um, and we also conducted a pilot study in which we conducted a forest visitor survey at National Forest Inventory sample plots. We then continued in 2016 with an online survey in which we integrated photos from the NFI. So we basically tried another approach. Instead of doing forest visitor surveys in the forest at sample plots, we try to integrate photos from the sample plots into an online survey. And then from 2017 onwards, um, we had a study extending the pilot study in the whole of Switzerland. In 2020, we also started another project which aimed at um, assessing more multi-sensory dimensions of forest attractiveness and especially we were able to integrate the measurements of sounds in the forest or the recording of sounds in the forest with um, acoustic specialists. And also um, in 2020 the third round of VAMOS of our um, social cultural forest monitoring was run and we were able to integrate um, photos into this big survey as well. So we'll see what comes out um, concerning this. And um, actually from this year onwards, we also have a new module within the National Forest Inventory specializing on the monitoring of the social function of forests. Now, as I mentioned, just showing you the, the timeline, there are really two possible approaches that we are aware of, of linking these two forest monitoring instruments on the one hand by conducting on-site surveys at National Forest Inventory sample plots, and on the other hand um, of integrating photos into online surveys. And in both cases, we ask respondents to rate the perceived visual attractiveness of the forest on a scale from one to 10 and then used multi-level modeling to predict visual attractiveness from both plot-related inventory data and visitor-related questionnaire data. And we just used visual attractiveness as one possibility to measure um, the recreational value of the forest, and it's just a variable with which um, we can link the physical and social aspects. So just so that you understand the results afterwards. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with multi-level models, this is our data structure. So we have, we have different forests. And for each forest, we have data, um, basically the National Forest Inventory data, for example, the degree of mixture, so um, the percentage of coniferous forests versus deciduous forests, or for example, the, the stand structure, is it a single layered forest, a multi-layered forest, ground vegetation cover, and so on. Well, um, numerous value variables. And nested into each forest are forest visitors. And for each forest visitor, we also have data from the questionnaire um, concerning um, social demographics, their motives to visit the forest, their preferences, and so on. Now, I don't want to go into this model into detail, just to show you the results of the pilot study. That's what the multi-level model looked like. The main result is that 85% of visual, of variation in visual attractiveness was actually explained by individual char characteristics of forest visitors. And out of those 85%, we were able to explain 9% of 
variation, so not very much. Um, with the preferences, the forest visited most of, if it was the forest visited most often, and the importance of forest during childhood and forest ownership. The about 15 or 15% of visual attractiveness um, was of variation in visual, visual attractiveness was due to forest characteristics. And out of this 67% was actually explained by stand structure because people um, much preferred multi-layered forests to single-layered forests. Now, I just quickly also want to show you the results of the online survey to compare. Again, this is the model that we published that I don't want to go in, into detail unless somebody's really interested. Um, but again, the main results, we saw that 76% that of variation in visual attractiveness was again due to the individual characteristics of forest visitors. Out of this, we were able to explain 16%, again, by preference, different preferences and motives. The fear of the forest had a negative impact if people were afraid of any aspect of the forest. Ticks, for example, being alone, uh, unleashed dogs, and so on. Um, again, the importance of forest during childhood played a role. Um, and the age and the language region within Switzerland that people came from, which basically reflects um, what cultural background that the people have. So is it more from the, the Germanic, German speaking part or more from the um, French or Italian speaking part? 24% of variation were explained by the forest characteristics, so by the NFI data, and about half of this we were able to explain um, on the one hand by classical NF, NFI data like lying dead trees, which were not liked very much. Um, signs of logging were perceived negatively. But there were also factors that, for example, had more to do with the photo rather than with the forest. For example, if the photo had been taken on sunny conditions or not. And we saw that ivy and ferns were perceived as negatively. Now coming to the extension of the pilot study, the forest visitor survey in the whole of Switzerland. Um, these were the, the sites that we, that we chose both for a forest and for a winter survey, the 41 sites scattered across the whole of Switzerland. Um, these are mainly sites near um, national inventory forest plots where they uh, national forest inventory plots where there are also a lot of people. Yeah, we used 50 plots originally. We um, I used 41 in the end um, because these were the plots that had a winter and a summer survey as well. And we conducted at least 20 interviews with forest visitor in both seasons. The questionnaire was based on the, the other studies that I've already showed you. And again, for respondents were asked to rate the perceived visual attractiveness of the forest on a scale from one to 10. We asked the people to look in the direction of the NFI sample plot from the footpath. And data on forest characteristics were also collected from this viewpoint, which is a slightly different approach from the normal data collection um, in the National Forest Inventory, where you normally really go into the plots and assess the data or the, the trees and whatever much more closely. But we wanted to cover the forest visitors perception. We measured visibility range um, with terrestrial laser scanning together with a laser scanning specialist. And Concerning the results, well, these are the activities that we found in winter and summer. Now, please note that this is not representative for the activities in the whole of Switzerland, but it's just what we found on these 41 plots that um, where we questioned the people. Well, 
walking and hiking was definitely most popular, um, followed by mountain biking in summer. We had a few plots here um, where we had some winter spots in winter, but all in all winter spots really played a minor role. And these other activities were about roughly the same in summer and in winter, jogging, um, nodding walk, nordic walking, horse riding. To do the multi-level modeling, this time we needed a three-level model because of the seasons. So again, we have the, the forest, then um, nested in the forest are the two seasons, the characteristics in winter and in summer. And of course, we also have some characteristics on forest level or location level that um, did not have a seasonal variation. And then for each season, we have the forest visitors again with their characteristics. Um, here again, very briefly, the multi-level model that we um, came up with. Now, here we saw again mainly um, or 84% of variation was due to the individual characteristics of forest visitors. So similar as in the other studies, um, this still really plays the greatest role. And from uh, the other 16% were split into about 8% um, seasonal differences in characteristics at each site and about 8% were due to the characteristics at each location that were did not dependent on the season. So what were these characteristics? Um, again, on individual level, the forest visitor level, we had social demography. Well, that really played a minor role. Um, some motives and some forest preferences Concerning the seasonal forest characteristics, um, we have things like lying dead trees, um, heaps of stones and stone walls. Um, then we have the cover of berry bushes, which had an interaction with season. So berry bushes were perceived as um, more positive in summer and negative in winter. And concerning the characteristics, of the location. Um, Winthrow, I have to say, mainly we had to assess that because we had some wind storms in 2017 when we did the field work. And some of our plots, unfortunately, were affected. Um, and visibility range was negative in the model. Um, most likely, we have a bell shaped curve in visibility range. And again, the presence of ivy was, um, was negative. We had that in the picture study as well. Well, if we compare the online study with the field study, we have more confounding effects in the field situation. And so the measured factors of interest have smaller perceptual effects than expected, but we are closer to reality. As I saw, we cannot explain very much. It um, was also partly method development. So, well, it was worth a try. So does forest quality, for example, visual attractiveness play a role in forest recreation? Well, yes, it does play a role. It doesn't play the main role, but it explains 15 to 24% of variation in our study. So yes, it does make a difference to the people what the forest looks like. Now, the other question that we had is, can we predict visual attractiveness of the forest with physical forest characteristics and social data? 
And we saw that forest characteristics as measured in national forest inventories can in part explain visual attractiveness as a measure for recreational value of the forest and visitors perception. But we also saw that um, perceived visual attractiveness is mainly determined by forest visitor characteristics and it is still unclear what exactly determines this. Of course, then we want to know after all this, what is the added value for these two monitoring in instruments? So what is the added value for the NFI, for example? Should other NFIs do things like that as well? Well, we have, well, we know now a few variables that contribute to visual attractiveness. Um, the main, uh, I guess the most, the more important thing is that it is a method of integrating recreation and social aspects into um, the National Forest Inventory, which is normally very much national scientific, uh, natural scientific dominated. And also do we have an added value for these nationwide um, surveys, population surveys? Well, integrating physical forest characteristics um, can contribute to explaining respondents' assessment of the forest. And for practice, well, with this method, we ha had hoped that um, we can come up with some indications which forests are particularly attractive for recreation in order to adapt forest management accordingly. So with these kinds of studies, one idea might be that um, if a forest is potentially very attractive um, for people, then you could discuss, okay, uh, it is important to have forests where people can go to. So could this be an aim for this forest? Uh, do you want to manage this forest in a way that it's attractive for people to go to? Or the opposite is also possible. Maybe it's a forest that is really important for nature conservation. And in that case, um, one could also say one tries to manage the forest in a way that it is not attractive for people to go to. Now, um, for the new um, NFI module, which doesn't have a name in English yet, we have to look for one first, but it's only just started. But the idea is in the um, Swiss NFI that we have a module now for the systematic long-term monitoring of the social function of forests and a permanent contact person for all these things which hopefully will also enable a spontaneous reaction to unforeseen events. For example, if there is a windstorm um, or drought or anything that it is possible to very quickly um, start surveys um, to see how the population reacts to this, how they perceive this uh, and so on. Um, possible also, like we've been doing now, field surveys related to um, NFI sample plots um, or online surveys in addition um, to the existing um, social cultural forest monitoring and also better utilization of existing data. And in the next two years, so for, uh, especially 2022 to 24, the main focus will be on forest visit frequency, number of forest visitors and the analysis of existing data from the forester survey that um, the NFI conducts already um, from social media and from PPGIS data from the VAMOS survey that was run in 2020. So thanks a lot for your attention and I'm happy to answer any questions you have or react to comments.
Um, yeah, <laughs> thank you so much, um, Dr. Hecke-Schweider, for the presentation. It was uh, really interesting. And we, we have uh, received uh, quite a lot of questions during your presentation. Yeah. And um, I will just pick a few of them and we'll see if we, if we can answer them. So, um, first question um, is, um, did you think about linking the concept of Himerobai to your studies? I don't really know what this is. And um, does forest bathing play a role or is part of the recreational activities? Um, concerning the first question, I'm afraid I can't answer that either because I didn't understand. Um, yeah, me neither. <laughs> maybe, maybe the person who asked the question could explain. Or, or hello. Can... Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, so um, I don't know if this concept of ephemerobi is known in, uh, in, in forestry science. I did my studies in cultural landscape science and uh, there were quite some studies going on in, as far as I know, at least in Austria where I come from. And uh, simply saying it's a concept that describes how far or close to nature an ecosystem is. And I could imagine that uh, if there are data about that, that's, I, I don't know, um, that could be an option to, um, to include uh, a number of, of uh, factors in, into the study. <clears throat> but if you don't know about that concept, then uh, the question does not really make sense. Um, well, maybe what I can say is that um, concerning the, the people's orientation um, towards nature, that we did not include that into our field, into the field studies that I showed you. Um, it is actually included in, in VAMOS, so in, in our nationwide survey. There we actually ask um, some questions, well, related or, or Oh, that are part of the um, NEP, the um, New Ecological Paradigm, to find out what is people's attitude towards, na well, well, towards nature or mm. environment like that. But yes, um, I do agree with you that the people's attitudes would be important as well. Well, well uh, just for clarification, it's not about people's attitude. The concept of hemorrhage is a scientific concept. Okay. Okay, but uh, well, if you don't know it, okay. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, what about the second part of the question? Um, forest, forest bathing. Forest bathing. Um, <laughs> I think we just didn't, I think in the field, we just didn't meet anyone who was forest bathing. Mm -hmm. And in the activities, also in the online surveys, um, people always have the possibility of, of writing something else. So they, they're always asked to, to write, you know, which activities they do in the forest most often, which activities that they generally do in the forest. Mm -hmm. And up to now, no, it just, <laughs> we haven't come across it. So okay. probably just not enough people doing that yet. Okay. And um, next question is from um, Grigol Tsurabiani. I don't, I really don't know how to pronounce it. Um, his question is, um, um, can you use uh, the recreational uh, aspect of the forest um, as an alternative employment issue for foresters. Uh, sorry, I didn't quite. Yeah, I think he means like um, the the foresters. How how can we um, integrate them 
into like the the recreational aspects of the of the forest, or of or or we, how do we um, um, change forest management so that that the forest gets more attractive? I think it's something along these lines. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, well. It's extremely important to to include the foresters. Mm. Well, in the um, Swiss National Forest Inventory, there is actually also a survey aimed at foresters. So they they also do a forest a forester survey. So there's a contact there. Um, but I mean, for really, if you're really looking at at single case studies really at, at local areas, then I would say it's important to work together with the foresters from the very beginning, if you're starting a new project yeah. or if there really are open questions that have to be answered. But from this, just from the studies now that, that we did, as I said, it was more a method and more really a lot of method development and a way of trying to integrate even just the whole topic into the national forest inventory and as you saw from the results at the moment i wouldn't really say we can go out to the foresters and you know present it like that or say you know you need to um, leave more dead trees or less dead trees so mm. it's not the results just simply aren't really, really on that that level of, of quality yet. Okay. And maybe um, a last question um, from Charles Alex um, Baita. Um, he asks, um, uh, based on your study or presentation, what might you suggest to the countries who have tropical forests and um, will ecotourism uh, work as a setup? So. Um, it's maybe a little bit difficult translation to um, tropical forests, but <laughs> just maybe <laughs> in your, in your uh, opinion. <laughs> Well, I guess the, the methods can be can be applied in the same way. Mm -hmm. um, and studying tourism is actually also something that we would be interested in doing. So the things that I've been doing up to now are actually mainly um, local nearby recreation. So more, not quite all, but more, a lot of it was focused on, you know, people um, bringing their dogs for walks or going out jo jogging, that kind of thing. Um, we had a few mountainous areas and there we also had some tourists that we interviewed. I think not so many international tourists, it was more really Swiss tourists. Um, but we are aware of the fact that, of course, when you're on holiday and when you're a tourist, and especially if you're in a, another country, um, that will bring in a completely new dimension um, and completely different answers. So, you know, applying the, the whole thing to areas that are used, being used for tourism, um, I think would certainly yield different results from what we've seen. But certainly it's possible you get totally different and um, different perceptions from tourists than from local people. Not always, but sometimes. Yeah. And maybe just not, uh, one last question. Um, this just came in. Um, did you consider um, forest infrastructure um, while assessing its attractiveness? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we, well, yes and no, we did not in the on-site studies. 
Um, but it, but infrastructure is included in VAMOS. And I'm just thinking, yes, it was also included in the on, online survey. So on the on-site studies was mainly left out for time reasons. And because we did the interviews at places where there was no specific infrastructure apart from the footpath. But certainly um, for the attractiveness, not of not concerning forest characteristics, but just generally the attractiveness of a forest for recreation, um, there the infrastructure certainly plays a big role. It was just not what we were focusing on. But definitely, um, if they are, I mean, footpaths or not, or if they are benches um, to sit on, those kinds of, of things, if they are infrastructure, it also attracts people. Okay. Thank you so much for um, answering these questions. And I think we can move on to the next speaker. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank that's yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Heget Schweider. It was a really interesting presentation. And also thank you for the questions. Before starting, I will give a little bit of information about Dr. Yildirim's background. Uh, Dr. Hassan Tezjan Yildirim is currently Associate Professor at the Department of Forest Policy and Administration at Istanbul University Jerapurstu Faculty of Forestry. He received his undergraduate degrees from Istanbul University, and he obtained his master's and PhD from the same university, university in 2004 and, and 2010. Both his master's and PhD dissert, dissertations is focused on forest policy, and his current research focuses in the area of forest policy, forest products and production and trade policy. So. Dr. Yildirim, the floor is yours. Thank you for joining today. Thank you, Elif. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I see there are uh, many different countries to participations. It's uh, uh, very good for us. And uh, uh, I will try to explain to you uh, about Turkish forestry organization and uh, related with uh, nature conservation studies. Uh, I put into my presentation uh, some uh, information about uh, Turkish forestry and uh, I add uh, uh, our, uh, our, uh, uh, I couldn't speak, our uh, uh, study about uh, nature conservation. Uh, Elif says, uh, I'm a uh, forest policy uh, department. I uh, study policy department, uh, but uh, in, uh, two day, in two years, uh, I will give a lecture about uh, open door recreation uh, lesson and uh, nature protection uh, areas in Turkey. And then because of that, I start to uh, a little bit uh, policy uh, information. Uh, we know that uh, forest policy mainly of focus on the relations uh, between forest resources and demands of uh, society. We, uh, we try to balance uh, needs of society and forest resources. Uh, because of that, uh, if you talk about uh, uh, recreation and nature conservation, it's a uh, it's, uh, uh, first uh, aim first aim is uh, what we talk about the forests, and then <clears throat> in our study uh, we uh, we context in the aim of the paper uh, introduce introduce the Turkish forestry organization and uh, its uh, main studies with a framework of national national legislation focus on the nature conservation related studies. We, uh, we try to explain uh, in the past uh, which, uh, which, uh, which is important to forest and uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in, in the future, uh, which, which aims is in, will be important to us. 
Uh, first of all, in the last case, the ecological environmental functions of forests have gained importance among forest resources uh, management approach. Uh, also, awareness of forest organizations, managers, and decision makers on nature conservation in, uh, is increased. In our previous studies, was found the most important function uh, of the forest is recognized as environmental and ecological function for today and by the uh, future by the forest managers. And we uh, understood, understood that uh, in the future, uh, forests uh, uh, are not only uh, product, uh, product, products, uh, which products, uh, uh, wood and non-wood forest products. And uh, also, uh, uh, Forest managers expect that forest managers uh, emphasize uh, that uh, conservation forestry. Conservation forestry is the main uh, for main uh, idea in the future. And then uh, we say two other highlights uh, issues are follows after uh, conservation of forest. Sustainability, environmental problems, forest interactions, uh, participation is very, very important uh, in these days, improving the multifunctional forest management, protected areas, biodiversity, public relations, and last one, uh, forest certification. If you look uh, all of the uh, highlights, we can see the only one uh, highlight is uh, related with uh, forest products forest certification, the others, uh, especially uh, related with the uh, conservation and uh, protect of the uh, forest areas. Undoubtedly, these issues are very important in uh, reaching nature conservation related policy uh, objectives. Uh, parallel, uh, parallel to national and international trends, uh, we heard before, uh, presentation, nature con conservation related issues is largely expressed in countries policy documents. Uh, thus, some new related legal agreements uh, in hand, uh, enacted uh, and forestry organization responsibility are uh, increasing. And we see, uh, we will see some uh, pictures in my uh, presentation, uh, Turkey National Parks uh, we can see in the uh, in here uh, Altın Dere Altın Dere Valley National Park, Sümele Manastır, and uh, other uh, pictures. You can see Kaçkar Mountain, Spil Mountain, and Gülük Mountain Termosos National Park. And uh, second, we we can talk about the uh, forest resources and uh, forestry organization in Turkey. Uh, if you look at the forest in Turkey, we can see 99.9% uh, .9 of forests uh, owned by government and uh, very, very less uh, owned uh, by the uh, private uh, sector or private uh, people. And uh, uh, could you see our uh, forest uh, especially in the north of the site and uh, south of the site and uh, another uh, another uh, place, the uh, west side. And we uh, we talk about uh, uh, forest and main functions. If you look, uh, economical, uh, ecological, and social cultural uh, functions. Uh, if we separate it, uh, you can see especially. Uh, the uh, economic uh, functions is uh, bigger than other uh, functions, especially uh, if we focus on the uh, social cultural uh, functions, uh, 1.8 million hectares uh, used by uh, social cultural functions. And uh, Turkey is located the uh, crossroads of the continents of Europe, Asia, and 
Africa have coast with the Black Sea, Mediterranean Sea, and Aegean Sea. Turkey forests are extremely rich in terms of uh, biological diversity because of the uh, geographic uh, position. There are uh, 9,000 uh, 9, plant species and uh, 3,000 of which are endemic in the country. Uh, most of species are found in the forests. The number of national parks uh, and other protected areas in country has uh, gradually expanded uh, since the first national park was created in uh, 1958. Today, there are uh, 45 national parks scoring an area of uh, approximately uh, 900,000 hectares. They cover the largest area among the other protected areas within the forest regime, and they account for 48.2% uh, of the total protected areas. And I try to explain, uh, we, uh, we talked about the uh, forest, we uh, talked about the uh, protected areas, include forest and uh, not uh, in forest. In addition to national parks, the protected area of system under the forest regime compares uh, 45 national parks, uh, 247 nature parks, uh, 30 nature protection area, and the last uh, 100, uh, 116 nature monuments. We try to uh, explain the uh, position of the protected areas in Turkey, uh, size and uh, num uh, number and uh, area covered. We, we can see, uh, especially in the inside of the forest, uh, protected areas category, national parks, nature parks, nature protection areas, uh, nature movements totally uh, 438 and uh, area uh, approximately uh, 1 million hectares. And uh, uh, outside of the forest regime uh, and other protected areas, uh, special environmental conservation areas, Ramsar sites, uh, natural sites, uh, world heritage sites, uh, totally uh, the number of them uh, 2,616 and uh, their area covered uh, 4.5 million hectares. Uh, I want to show you some example from national parks from Turkey. Uh, uh, I give you, I give you, uh, I give you uh, amount. Uh, 45 national parks before I said you, and uh, the Beşehir Lake National Park covering uh, 80,000, uh, 80, 80, approximately we can say uh, 90,000 hectares is the largest area in Turkey, whereas the smallest area in the bird paradise uh, in English name, we say Kuş Cenneti National Park with an uh, 64 hectares. The biggest national park and the smallest uh, national park in Turkey. The vast majority of the national parks are located in the forest lands. However, there are a few exceptions. For instance, the Munzer Valley, Göreme, Boğazköy, Alacahöyük and Nemut Mountain National Parks were established in areas where steep, uh, steep type vegetation uh, pre predominates. They present, they represent mainly uh, culture oriented resources. And uh, you can see Göreme National Park, uh, there is no forest, and Boğazköy J National Park, uh, there is no forest, and then Nemut Mountain National Parks uh, like this. And then, and on the other end, the park resources may contain both natural and cultural features affecting for uh, selection as a national park. 
is the uh, in 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 Turkey, uh, if we decided to uh, place to a place uh, national park, there is a very uh, very uh, simply method. For example, uh, there is a uh, organization uh, national uh, national uh, sorry uh, protected areas uh, general directorate of uh, protected areas, and they. Uh, prepare a report and send to uh, General Directorate Center in Ankara, and they uh, send to this report to uh, government, and government uh, decided that the here is national park or not. It's very simple. And then some of the parks, such as the Olympus Bay Dollar, the Köprülü Canyon and the Dilek Peninsula Menderes Delta consist of not only archaeological and historical values, but also a high diversity, endemic native species, and uh, geo geomorphologic features. You can see there is a uh, many different uh, many different. Uh, can I say features, many uh, different features uh, of the national parks in Turkey. In accordance with these features, the country's parks also provide different types of recreational opportunities, including beachside, beach-based, cultural-based, and mountain-based activities. Uh, because of that, uh, in Turkey, uh, many national parks use uh, use a recreational activities and rec recreational uh, areas. Now a little bit, uh, I try to explain Turkish forest organization and legislation in terms of nature protection. Uh, the legal experience of Turkey and national park and protected areas dates back to uh, 1956 year. The first, the forest law number uh, 6,831 enacted in 1956 subdivided the forest into conservation forests, national, for, national parks, and production forests in terms of their characteristics. This was the first legal arrangement on the protected areas in Turkey. Uh, this act uh, important for uh, protected areas because uh, before we have a uh, we have forest law uh, in uh, 19 uh, for 1937. Uh, this is this law is a second. At the present, uh, one of Turkey's forest policy objectives is to uh, benefit from forests in terms of environmental conservation, especially through protected forest areas. Protected area related issue uh, receive increasing attention in the country's forestry agenda recently. The National Park Law No uh, 2873 of uh, 1983 defines protected areas within the forest regime and indicates management, planning, and operation activities. Uh, a national park is defined by the law as a natural area, including rare natural and cultural values at the national and international level from scientific and aesthetic aspect and conservation, relaxation and touristic activities. There is a, a two important words in here, uh, relax, relax, relaxation and uh, touristic areas is very important. And according to Turkish legislation on protected uh, forest areas, national parks are principally state-owned state -owned areas of high, na uh, high natural, historical, archaeological, recreational, scientific, and aesthetic values. Also, some other legal in, uh, arrangements are acted respectively. Some of them can be listed as like this. 
And uh, we talk about the forest, we talk about the uh, protected areas. By the way, the uh, organization. The organization is very huge in Turkey. Why? Because uh, you will see Republic of Turkey, Minister of Agriculture and Forestry. Agriculture and Forestry, approximately uh, Turkey land, uh, if you talk about uh, all of country, uh, uh, 75 percent uh, of the land uh, by uh, how I, uh, how I uh, say um, by managed by the uh, Republic of Turkey Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry uh, the organization the country for the formulation and implementation of policies and associated legal agreements concerning the conservation and use of natural resources, especially agriculture, forest, and wetlands. It's a very huge area. In this organization, there are uh, three general directorates to related with forest management. Uh, first of all, the general directorate of forestry, second general directorate of nature protection and national parks, and the last one, general directorate of combating desert, uh, desertification and erosion. Uh, there is uh, some information about uh, uh, organization, uh, especially uh, municipality of uh, agriculture and forest are uh, 15 regional directorates and uh, uh, 28 regional directorates of forestry attached to GDF. And you can see organization structure. There are uh, many different, uh, many different organization. Uh, in this here, uh, there is a similar uh, organization, but different place. The general director of, no, uh, of nature protection and national parks, uh, currently under the Ministry of Environment and Forestry, is responsible for making and implementing uh, decisions and policies and planning and management on protected areas that enter into the forest region. Uh, the Department of National Parks attached the general directorate undertake the direct management in the country's national parks at the national level. There are also national park offices uh, at the site level to the manage uh, individual uh, parks. The uh, general directorate national parks uh, services support the dual, uh, dual, dual missions of the protected forest area system, which uh, how visitor enjoyment and conservation of uh, natural cultural resources. Uh, main problems seen in managing protected areas into the forest region in Turkey can be classified into following items. There is, uh, we, uh, we found these problems, especially uh, prepared our uh, study about uh, protected areas. Uh, we uh, did a, a questionnaire with uh, forest managers and uh, who use in uh, national parks in Turkey. Uh, we, uh, we contact with all of uh, national parks officers. And we can say administration, legislation problems, uh, planning problem, uh, finding an additional sources, uh, public participation, uh, data collection is very, very uh, important. And uh, finally, uh, inappropriate uses such as mass tourism. Especially nature conservation related uh, provincial units have some difficulties in terms of personal, uh, personal impositions, financial problems, lack of equipment, and uh, finally problem parallel uh, to nat national uh, human resources policy. We, uh, I try to explain uh, to you uh, our uh, studies. We uh, manage, uh, arrange uh, many uh, meetings in the past. The, import the importance level 
functional of forest for today uh, are evaluated by forest managers and environmental ecological functions and assessed to be uh, important today. They are expected to become very important in the future. I try to explain the uh, beginning of the, my uh, presentation, this situation. Uh, I can pass some of uh, this one. And then additional other main problems affecting the activities of the direct trades, we say uh, deficiency of personal motivation, uh, conflicts in the forest public relations and lack of professional staff. Uh, there is a main problem in my opinion, uh, lack of professional staff because uh, all of uh, managers or all of uh, forest engineering in Turkey uh, change uh, your uh, place uh, 10 years uh, again, again. Uh, we talk about this, uh, uh, the result, uh, Turkey, Turkey has a big potential of biodiversity and nature conservation, but both by the effects of inter, uh, international developments and national potential, nature conservation has become as one of the priorities of Turkish uh, forestry uh, policy, Turkish forest policy. Thus, Turkey has related lots of international con uh, conventions like Ramsar uh, sites, uh, Convention on Biodiversity, European Landscape Convention, and also some new agreements on environmental impact assessment, uh, size regulation, wetlands regulation, etc. And then there is a, a many uh, examples in here related uh, legislation. And then in spite of these developments, there are some uh, insufficiency on legal and organization structure about nature conservation in Turkey. Apart from the national park and forest law, there are lots of laws in relation to national parks and other uh, protected areas. There are mixed legislation, we can say. In addition, some areas have more than one protected uh, area status. Because of that, uh, I try to explain uh, legislation like uh, both national park and natural cultural sites and uh, another uh, protection status. There be causing conflicts of powers and responsibilities among organization. Because of that, uh, sometimes uh, organizations uh, couldn't uh, good relations uh, to uh, manage of the land. There is a uh, many organizations include the areas. Thus, we say uh, conflicts may take place in the administration of the area because of the lack of the uh, coordination among the public agencies. I try to explain another end. The same problem is seen in transboundary uh, protected areas. So some challenges on uh, continuity of protection and control activities, integrity of administration can be seen and legal agreements, uh, I try to explain, new uh, agreements I try to explain, and an indication, uh, there is not an established shadow and process for updating of the management plan. It's a, the, sometimes can be a problem. In addition, a national land use plan and a national system plan for protected areas have not yet been prepared until today. It's a little bit problem. Furthermore, local management of national park requires a high in intensity of interactions with local governments and agencies, resource users, and local community. In here, I, uh, I will try to explain, especially uh, in a, uh, if we talk about the tourism, uh, in, in this place, uh, we supported the ecotourism. Ecotourism is, the, uh, is growing uh, by the way, uh, by the uh, by day by in Turkey uh, and uh, ecotourist and uh, eco guide uh, growing up. 
but not enough in these days because uh, people uh, don't know how we manage and use this place. Because of that, uh, because of that, the local management based on stakeholders participation is becoming increasingly important for the park and local people in assuring strategic nature conservation. Development objectives and sustainability is uh, very important. And uh, uh, the overcome the current problems, Turkish government should pay more attention to the wider social, economic, and environmental benefits of the protected areas in their decision-making process, including biodiversity conservation, land use, and funding. The government and protected area authorities should establish more effectively managed system of protected areas considering international criteria and national uh, conditions, we can say. Now, the, finally, you can see the, some uh, examples in our uh, country, uh, recreation activities, and uh, maybe uh, we can uh, understand what we try. There is a ecotourism areas, and some people try to new historical uh, table on the uh, in here you can see and uh, in Uludağ is the uh, is national park but uh, especially mass tourism using in this place and because of that some uh, features can uh, lost and the, the <laughs> very good places in uh, snowing is uh, very good is especially in the winter time uh, and the, uh, another place Kaçkar is the uh, very good places in Turkey in north of uh, country and finally uh, I will try uh, to explain the Turkish uh, forestry Turkish forestry organization and include the uh, national park system and uh, protected areas uh, and finally uh, there is uh, I can explain to uh, problems of our system and uh, I think uh, it could be good thank you for your attention and thank you for your interest Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Yildirim, for your presentation. It was really interesting to hear about different parts of Turkish Forestry Organization. And in the chat, we have three questions for you. And okay. uh, I, I will tell the first question. It, this is from Huang Viet. In your study, you have to know the needs of local people and forest resources are, resource use are balanced so that we can know whether to change the applied policy or not. Uh, I will look the question, local people, the resources are balanced so that we can know how to change the applied. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a good question. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to uh, thank you. And then uh, I try to explain in my uh, idea, uh, Especially we, we talk about uh, uh, local people inside of the forest. Uh, there is, a, we, uh, we call them uh, uh, forest villagers. Forest villagers means include, uh, live include forest or uh, near the, uh, they uh, live near the forest. Uh, we, if we talk about, uh, if we talk about the protected areas, uh, our uh, government uh, organization try to use them, uh, especially uh, for a guide who uh, come uh, to forest uh, and uh, uh, and uh, especially to recreation. And uh, another uh, another way they uh, protect uh, their forest. In our country, there there is a uh, there is an idea. If uh, I live in forest, or if I live near the forest, the forests are uh, the forests are own forest. 
not government policy. It is not really, but uh, people think like this because of that uh, they try to protect of forest. And then uh, there is a three main uh, policy, uh, forest policy in Turkey. The first of all, uh, protect of forest, conservation of forest and growing uh, forest area. And the uh, second, uh, who live in or near the uh, forest, we call them uh, forest villagers, support to them. Support means uh, they use, uh, uh, we use, uh, we give a, a, we give job uh, in forest uh, works. And then uh, we try, we try to change some uh, policy because why? Uh, because there are a few uh, people live in or near the forest area and we, we try to change. Uh, I think I explained, but uh, of course enough my answer. Okay, thank you very much. And um, for the second question, um, one of our participants already answered from the chat. So I will move to the third question. And this is from Indonesia. And uh, it's more related with the conservation topic, but um, how about the animal trade in Turkey? How Turkey protects its animals? Is there an organization about it? Yeah, uh, it's a good question and a uh, hard question for me. And then uh, there is a, uh, there is a many, uh, le uh, many legislations uh, related with uh, especially uh, animals. Uh, and there is a international and uh, international act uh, about uh, animal trade in Turkey, but uh, of course uh, there is there are uh, different people, uh, especially uh, especially and uh, not uh, how I explain uh, not legislation way they used and <clears throat> but uh, if try to explain uh, uh, example, uh, I think uh, I will give answer. There is a, uh, there, there was a uh, famous people in Istanbul. He, uh, he collected uh, many uh, Kelebek Nedi, many uh, butterflies, Butterfly. butterflies. Uh, he collected many butterflies from the different places uh, inside of Turkey or outside of the Turkey, of the world we talked about. Uh, and uh, he, he has uh, many, many different uh, butterflies collected and uh, show the people. Uh, there, there is, there is a, a, a shopping area in uh, here, uh, Istinia Park, uh, he opened a, a museum in here, in there, and uh, he tried to uh, show people uh, many different uh, butterflies. Our uh, general director uh, of uh, general director of natural uh, areas and protected managers uh, went this place and uh, collected and uh, bring all of uh, butterflies examples and he uh, went to jail. It is a, uh, it is a not a normal uh, activi activity because they have, to per they have to give permission from the uh, government and then after that he can use and because of that, uh, it's, it is a not easy to uh, animal trade in Turkey. Uh, I try to explain this one. And how Turkey protects its animals? Uh, is there an organization? Yes. Uh, 
uh, I try to explain uh, our uh, our uh, organization, uh, especially uh, nature uh, protected uh, discipline in in here. Uh, they uh, they try to uh, they try to protect uh, especially uh, nature animals inside of the forest. Of course, uh, maybe they heard uh, from the news from the internet uh, some uh, hunting uh, hunting. Uh, Animals, yes, uh, there was a there was a an act and legislation about this one, and uh, maybe uh, I can uh, explain like this. I think enough, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, I hope it was clear, the answer. And so far, we don't have. Uh, any other questions? So, do you have any final words? Hello, everyone. I have Hello. one more question for uh, Mr. Tescan, if I'm correct. Yes. Uh, about the nature conversation. At first, I'm Tarandoli from, from Kosovo, and I'm working on this kind of nature conversation in my country. And I have a question for Mr. Tescan about the grants. If the Turkish government uh, provides some grants for local people about uh, nature conversation, I mean some small project to, to support them to provide the nature, nature conversation. Am I clear? Yeah. Uh... Uh, if I heard wrong, uh, you talk about uh, uh, grant, but uh, yeah, uh, grant uh, about what? I couldn't... About the nature conversation. I mean the small project from from the local people who who want to provide the nature conversation in their uh, areas. <laughs> ah, yeah. Uh, there, there is. Uh, if you talk about the forest protects. Uh, especially local people uh, from by the local people uh, or there is that that there is not a grant we can say why because uh, there is a many uh, units of the forest managers uh, in Turkey uh, approximately uh, a thousand point uh, a thousand two hundred uh, I think units uh, and that people uh, can enjoy the uh, forest works and uh, they uh, bring money they earn money from these works and they have uh, some uh, advantages uh, from other people for example uh, if they want to uh, buy a, a wood uh, for making a, a making a, a home for example uh, normal people uh, pay uh, for example pay a uh, hundred Turkish lira per uh, cubic meter but they only uh, pay uh, 20 Turkish lira per uh, cubic meters they have some advantage uh, but uh, directly uh, our government uh, our uh, first organization uh, directly uh, support them especially inside of the uh, who living inside the forest, uh, but directly uh, there is no uh, money support. Okay, thank you very much for your... My pleasure. Okay, um, 
Thank you. One of our participants has raised a hand, I guess, to speak up. So, Shariar Qureshi, you could ask your question. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, I was just asking that screen is not visible to me. I just want to ask this. Thank you. Uh, you mean the speaker is not visible? Yes, ma'am. Um, I don't really know what is the problem. It works right now, but <laughs> I mean, we are coming to an end of the webinar, so you could check the recording afterwards. So if there is no other final words, we can wrap up and finish the webinar. See you. Okay. Have a nice day. Yeah. Okay, I will stop the recording now.